Hey, 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 what's happening? Facebook Live. Hey, this is a great night. It's Friday. Uh, it's Good Friday. I am so glad that you have taken the time to join us on this evening. Listen, I just wanted to come on uh, this evening. Wasn't exactly scheduled, but I wanted to come on because I wanted to begin to encourage you is what I wanted to do. And I just received, you know, a word from the Lord, basically dealing with encouragement. I just want to encourage you. And so let's, I wanted to look at two things that are important to this time that we're in, that we're looking at is concerning prospering and being in health. So we're going to look at third John two. Let's go ahead and look at third John two. Listen, hit the share button, invite others on, tag a friend, put it in your group, uh, message them. I believe that this will be a great word for them. Uh, we're, we're not going to be long tonight, uh, but you can drop some hearts, drop some likes, uh, drop uh, some comments in here. Um, I'll be able to see the comments uh, that you have. But listen, there was a there's a scripture that I'll give first before I go to third John two is John chapter 10, verse number 10. And it's something that God had given us to start the year off is what God gave us to start this year off. And so in starting this year off in John 10 is John 10 and 10 that I want to remind everyone. I want to remind you, here's what the scripture says in John 10 and 10. It says the thief uh, does not come except to steal. Now, this is the job of the thief. He steals, kills, and to destroy. Now, here's what Jesus said. Jesus said, I came so that you could have life and have it more abundantly. Now, in the Amplified, the type of life that he is talking about, about this life that we're having, he says, we'll have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Now, say that again. We will have life in abundance to the full till it overflows. So listen, Jesus came so that we could have life. Now, I know the work of the cross that was so important to us, but here's the thing. He didn't come just so we can have what the world describes as life. He came so that we could have a God type of life, a God quality life. That's what he came for. So the type of life that he wants you to have is a God type, God quality life. So he wants me to have a God life, not just a good life, but a God life. That means that whatever I say, it happens. Uh, whatever I believe, it occurs. Uh, we got to look at when he started creating in the beginning with his mouth. When he started creating everything that he created, he said it was good. I'm going to say it again. Everything that he created, he said it was good. So when he created you and I, we have to understand that we're good. Tell you, uh, go ahead and type in the uh, comment section and say, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Why? Because he said I'm good. But here's the thing about getting this idea. A lot of what we see uh, today, a lot of what we see going on in our society, news and everything like that, a lot of it was the work of the enemy. He wanted to kill, steal, and to destroy. What? The type, he wanted to take the word from you. He wanted to kill the life that you were supposed to have. And he wanted to steal your confidence in the word of God. So he can't have any of that. Say he can't have that. He can't have that. So here's what I wanted to share with you this evening. I want to encourage you during this time that you have more authority than you know you have, and you have more authority than you believe and think you have. Now, here's number one. We've identified the job of the enemy to kill, steal, and to destroy. A lot of times the enemy has us putting people in place thinking that that's what we're supposed to do. That's what he, he it's in a person. It's not in a person. It's in the utilization of the enemy. Now let's go over. Yeah. Zoe, let's go over to this third John and two, because I really want you to begin to see uh, what, what the enemy is up to during this time, because a lot of us have taken our focus off of 
what God said this year was going to be, what the vision was going to be for this year, what the vision was going to be for your life. We've taken it all. People talking about, I want to do over in 2020. Uh, I want to do something different. Can we can we act like 2020 never existed? No, you're going to miss the harvest that's going to come if you're trying to bypass 2020, because you got to understand that the job of the enemy was to come and take away the word. That's in Mark chapter four. He wanted to take away the word that was sown in your heart in January, the word that was sown in your heart in February, the word that was sown in your heart at the very beginning of March. He wants to take away that word that was sown in your heart. We can't let him have what's sown in our heart. Now, that's, I want you to look at this because everything that's in correlation to what we look at. Now, 3 John and 2, 3 John and 2 says this. It says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul shall prosper. Now, let me look at the Amplified. And that same verse in verse number two, and then we want to break this down a little bit so that you can understand what the enemy is up to so that you can get your game plan going. You can get flowing. Now, here's what he said. Beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know your soul prospers spiritually. Now, let's break down who we are as people. Let's break down. We are a spirit. We are a spirit. We live in a body and we possess a soul. We are a spirit. We live in a body and we possess a soul. Now, your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, your chooser. That's your soul. Now, the promise of God says this, that you and I would prosper and be in health even as our soul shall prosper. So the key, watch this, to prospering and being in health is based upon the condition of our soul. Let me say it again. It's based upon the condition of our soul. Now, here's something that always happens with individuals that you read this verse, people say, oh, I don't want to hear about that old prosperity stuff. I don't want to hear about that and prosperity teaching, prosperity this. Well, see, that's coming from a person who doesn't understand what it means to prosper. If they understood what it means to prosper, uh, then they would receive it more so than getting rid of it. Now, get this. Prosperity is not just money. Prosperity is a result prosperity is a result. So when he says, above all things, I wish you prosper, he says, I want you to see the results. What? Of God's abundance. I want you to receive the results of God's abundance. And so a lot of times people are sick in their soul or they have holes in their souls or they or they need their souls restored because of the information that they've received because of how the upbringing that they had. But when we look at Psalms 23, he talks about he restores my soul. And so what a lot of us need is a restoration of the soul. And so a lot of times when we go off on people or it might be Christians and still cussing people out and so forth like that. No, 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 no. That means that there's a deficit in your soul that's causing you to do some of the things that you're doing. It's not that you're a bad person. You're a good person. There's just a deficit in here. There's a deficit in here that's causing us to do the actions. It's what David, the Bible calls David a man after God's own heart. And then here's what happened after he called him a man after God's own heart. He's uh, David, uh, this dude, had a deficit in his soul. That's why when he went out to the balcony and checked out Bathsheba, the only reason he did what he did was because he had a deficit in his soul that caused his life to make a choice to cause him to miss God's results in this. And so that's why in Psalms 51, he says, Lord, he says, uphold me with thy free spirit. He said, whatever you do, don't take it away from me. He wanted restoration. And so a lot of us, that's where we, in this particular time, 
You're not locked in. You're being restored. You're not shut in. You're being restored in this particular time. And so some of the things that you're, you're missing as a result of the life of God that he wants you to see his results is because of deficit of the soul. And so get this. And so one of the things that I did when I wrote a book about overcoming rejection, well, the reason that I was going through that particular part was there's a deficit in my soul. And then I had to find out in the scripture why the deficit was. It was almost like uh, that that girl, uh, um, um, uh, Jacob's wife, she was trying to please him. And so what happened was um, uh, uh, she had a deficit in her soul so all she tried to do was please her husband. That's all she, everything was towards her husband. Why? She couldn't see God's results because she had a deficit in her soul and he needed time to fix it. So in this hour, God is restoring our soul and we're going to come out seeing that prosperous life. What? The life of God that we get results with that. But here's the thing that happened with that girl. It wasn't until she took the focus off of her husband, put the focus on God. And when she put the focus on God, she now, the first three children she had, she named them trying to please her husband. But when she named the, that fourth son, Judah, Judah meant praise towards God. That's when this deficit was lifted off of her soul. And so maybe we're, we, we are, thank you, Ariel. Uh, maybe we are uh, trying to please other people. And I'm telling you that if you please God, uh, you begin to live peaceably with other people. Glory to God. So watch this. It is clear that God wants his children to, to prosper. It's clear. Prosperity should not be the end in itself. It ought to be the result. Here's what prosperity is. So when someone comes to you to attack prosperity, here where you can give them this definition, this definition, it ought to be a result of the quality of life, commitment, dedication, and action that is in line with God's word. I'm going to say it again. Prosperity ought to be the result of a quality life, commitment, dedication, and action that is in line with God's word. It literally means help on the road or succeed in reaching. So it's almost like, here's what you want. You, you have a goal that you desire to get to. Well, you want to reach the goal. Okay, when you want to reach the goal, that means that you want to prosper. That's exactly what it means. Now, here's what Satan has strategically lined up to do. He's got people against people. We're against each other. That's because he wants to take our eyes off of the results. He wants to take our eyes off of the end of the road. He wants to take our eyes off of having a good trip. He wants to take our eyes off of that. Well, how are we going to do that? Everything is done according to our soul. Because in our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. That's where we choose it. Our mind, our will, and our emotions, our chooser. That's what it is. And so what happens is, here's a reality. Who is making the choices for you? It is, is it the 12-year-old soul that was hurt and injured by somebody that's now making decisions for the 40-year-old you? And the 12-year-old with the hurt soul, hey, family, the 12-year-old with the hurt soul cannot be making the decisions for a 40 or a 50 or a 30 year old you. What happens? My soul needs to be restored. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me into the path of righteousness for his namesake. And here's the thing. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. So what is God into? He says, above all things, I wish you prosper and I wish you be in health. But here's the prerequisite to prospering being in health. And what the COVID-19, the coronavirus, or whatever it is, has gone after our health, and it has gone after your soul. Because when we've inundated ourselves with all the negative information, we will choose from the position of sight or fear, 
as opposed to choosing from the position of faith. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to know that God loves you enough that he wants you to focus on the 23rd Psalm. He loves you enough. We got it. I just wanted to let you know that there was an enemy that did this. The enemy is up to this, but we got a plan for him because here's the goal of the enemy. The goal of the enemy is to deceive the people of God out of believing his word. That's the goal of the enemy, to deceive the people of God so that we don't believe his word. It's what we choose, is what he chose with Adam. What? To deceive Adam to not believe the word of God is what he tried to choose with Jesus. He says, he says, command this stone to be made bread. What was he trying to do to deceive Jesus out of believing the word of God? In this hour, my friends, he just tried to deceive you. He's trying to make this thing so big before you that he's trying to deceive you. But I want you to be encouraged because it's almost like what God said to Joshua. Be strong and of good courage. Is what God said to David. You can take out this enemy, Goliath. You got a covenant with God and he doesn't. So tonight, I want you to be encouraged. Meditate on Psalms 23. Meditate on Psalms 23. Meditate on Psalms 1. Meditate. What am I doing? I'm restoring my soul. What am I doing? I'm getting rid of the deficit in my soul. What am I doing? I'm getting rid of the hurt in my soul. I'm getting rid of all of it because you can't live the life that God wants you to live. You can't get to the destination or journey that God wants you to live when you got a hole in your soul. And guess who put it there? Satan. Guess who's been trying to manipulate you? Satan. Guess who has been trying to use it to keep you soul sick so that you never live a prosperous life? Satan. That's who's done this. An enemy has done this. But here's what the Bible has assured us, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So remember, an enemy, did, an enemy did, number one, this ain't God. This ain't even you. An enemy did this. Number two, there's a way out of this. What? Meditating on the word of God day and night. Remember in Mark chapter four, he says that when you get the word, immediately Satan comes to steal the word. Satan wants to steal it. But when we believe we receive and we have the word, we receive 30, 60 and 100 fold, according to Mark chapter four. And last but not least, remember, Jesus came so that we could have his type of life. Jesus said it in red. I came so that you could have life and have it more abundantly. And I promise you on the other end of this, mm, glory to God, on the other end of this, you're going to experience that abundant life. How you know? Because we're not being deceived by Satan any longer. We don't have a hole in our soul. We have a prosperous soul. So now we can have a prosperous life. I started telling our church uh, last year sometime, 3rd John 2. I mean, I started telling our church, John 10 and 10. We don't come to do church. We come to do life. And my beloved, that's what you... Jesus came for us to do. He came for us to do life, what Zoe life, the God type of life, the God quality of life is what he came for us to do. So meditate on Psalms 23, meditate on Psalms 1, and then begin to post your testimonies and testify how you've developed in you, how you've overcome what other people have done to you, how you've overcome... Because, see, the only reason you get to love people is because you fixed the hole in your soul. They've done you wrong. That's that's point blank and simple. They've done you wrong. But when you fix the hole in your soul, you can love your enemies. Why? Because God said, and that's how I live his life, and those that despitefully use you. So, beloved, listen, be encouraged. I just wanted to come and share that with you. I, I was studying and praying today, and that's what God had revealed to me uh, exactly where we are in this time, the come out is much greater than the going in. So I love you guys. You all have a tremendous evening. If you have 
Okay, I, I mean, I'll do it right now because it's late at night. If you got any questions or anything you want to say, for the, we take about five more minutes, post them in the comment section. And if you need me to answer something, or if you just want to share a hallelujah with us, a glory to God with us, man, go right on and do that. And I'll sit here in the next four minutes and 45 seconds. Oh, God bless you. You are so welcome. God bless you, Miss Peggy. God bless you, Miss Sharon. Listen, whatever the enemy stole from you, he got paid back seven times. I heard that. I wanted to share it with you. So you ain't losing nothing in the season. The enemy got to pay you back seven times. Glory to God. Glory to God. Sounding board. Y'all got anything y'all want to put in there? Are y'all? Uh, Natasha, y'all got anything y'all want to put in there? I did want to give everybody an opportunity. If they want to say something, share something. This thing works on a delay a little bit, so I kind of give them an opportunity to share. If not, just text me and say no. Nah. Isn't that something? We text each other in other parts of the house. We're good. We're thankful and encouraged. Join. There you go. That's it. Join us on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at our virtual campus for our Easter service. We're going to get up and put our Easter clothes on, and we're going to do what God wants, and then we're going to do like how we want to do after the fact. We're going to have us a welcome back meeting. What? Welcome back uh, to fellowship. You see, people think it's about the building. No, it's about the fellowship that we have with e with each other. So it's going to be welcome back to fellowship where we get a chance to see each other and love up on each other and encourage each other in person. God bless you. We all received that. So Sunday morning and actually it's 930 as opposed to 10, 930 this Sunday uh, as opposed to 10. And thank you for putting that. But I, I didn't tell you what that was. So listen, I love you guys. Have a tremendous evening. Share this with someone that needs some encouragement, let them know that we're coming out of this much greater than we went into it. So God bless you all. We love you. Have a tremendous night. Get sweet sleep because God's got this. Amen.